Hi, welcome to the Ultimate Sports Vlog Podcast. Today is Monday, February 5th, 2018. Today I'm going to recap the Super Bowl it was, go over Nick Foles' future, and as well as Bill Belichick and Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski. Go over what went on in college basketball and the NBA this weekend and make picks for big college and NBA games for, for tonight and tomorrow night. And go over another key NBA injury and discuss the podcast plans for the rest of this week. The Super Bowl, it was incredible. Congratulations to the Philadelphia Eagles. Their first Super Bowl win in franchise history. They defeat the New England Patriots 41-33. Nick Foles with the Super Bowl MVP award through the late touchdown pass to Zach Gertz to uh, win the game. There was a big turnover at the end of the game, the the strip sack. Even though the Eagles only got a field goal out of that, that was probably the uh, biggest play of the game. Although Tom Brady did have a shot at a Hail Mary at the end of the game, and that would have taken a Hail Mary and a two-point conversion to tie the game if that were the case. Nick Foles, as I mentioned, was the Super Bowl MVP. 373 yards, three touchdowns, and an interception. Tom Brady probably had the best playoff game of his career, numbers-wise, 505 yards and three touchdowns. LeGarrette Blount, the former Patriot, 14 carries, 90 yards and a touchdown. James White, again, was great for New England, 7 carries, 45 yards and a touchdown. Danny Amendola, excellent for the Patriots, 8 receptions and 152 yards. Corey Clement, out of the backfield, Led the Eagles in receiving four receptions, 100 yards, and a touchdown. Zach Ertz, incredible. 67 yards on seven receptions and a touchdown. It was obviously the game-winning touchdown. Alshon Jeffrey had three receptions for 73 yards. Nelson Aguilar had nine of 84 yards. Jeffrey also had a touchdown. And Nick Foles actually had a receiving touchdown in there, too. And that... Touchdown was thrown by the one and only Trey Burton, who was a quarterback in college. And on the Patriots side, Danny Amendola actually had Brady wide open. Danny Amendola threw the pass, and Brady missed the pass, and or that could have been a touchdown too. That was funny. And Tom Brady actually had a a rushing attempt for six yards as well. Deion Lewis had nine carries for 39 yards. Burkhead, Rex Burkhead had three carries, 18 yards. Chris Hogan had a big game, six receptions and 128 yards. Rob Gronkowski, excellent, nine receptions, 116 yards and two touchdowns. But if the uh, Patriots won, Brady obviously would have been the MVP of the game. The scoring in the big game. The Eagles marched down the field on their first drive, only ended up with a three. And then the Patriots marched down the field on their first drive. They put up a three spot on the board, so two field goals to start the game. And then the next Eagles drive falls to Jeffrey for a 34-yard touchdown. Eagles missed the extra point. 9-3 was your score after one. Later on in the second quarter, LeGarrette Blount had a 21-yard 21 21 yard run to make it 15-3. The Eagles failed on a two-point conversion. And then the Patriots marched down, field goal 15-6. And then five minutes later, James White had the 26-yard touchdown run to make it 15-12. New England, believe it or not, missed an extra point as well. And right before the halftime was... The Trey Burton touchdown pass to Nick Foles to make it 22-12. Third quarter on the Patriots opening drive. Brady to Gronkowski for five yards, 22-19. Eagles answer back. Nick Foles to Corey Clement for 22 yards, 29-19 was the score there. Patriots answer back. Brady to Hogan for 26 yards to make it 29-26. To start the fourth quarter, the Eagles had a field goal, so that made it 32-26. And then the Patriots, five minutes later, 
Brady to Gronkowski for four yards. Take their first and only lead of the game. 33-32 Patriots. And then with 2.21 to go was the amazing catch by Ertz from Nick Foles from 11 yards. There was the, the review had to have been like five minutes. And uh, they indeed confirmed the call with a touchdown. Two-point conversion failed, so it was 38-33. And then the Jake Elliott with 105 to go put up the Eagles 41-33 for good. And then the Hail Mary attempt from Tom Brady to Gronkowski could have had it. It reminded me of the ending six years ago, Patriots-Giants. It was actually the six years ago today when the Giants defeated the Patriots in Super Bowl forty six. Similar to that play, Gronkowski could have or almost had the Hail Mary catch, but it was incomplete. Game over. Eagles win it. And as I mentioned, Foles, the Super Bowl MVP, could also be on the trade block. Ian Rappaport, before the game, reported that the Eagles could trade Nick Foles for the right offer. I think Foles is definitely going to be traded now, especially with this great Super Bowl game. Carson Wentz coming back. You know the Eagles are sticking with Wentz. I think somebody's going to overpay for Fultz. Whoever doesn't get Kirk Cousins or whoever doesn't or doesn't want to draft a quarterback. Like I can see the Browns getting in on Fultz. The Jets. Possibly Denver. Arizona. Maybe the Vikings if they are unable to re-sign Case Keenum. And uh, Teddy Bridgewater, I think uh, Bradford is the quarterback that's going to get left out of Minnesota. And then Rob Gronkowski, after the game, didn't rule out retirement because he has all this like concussion problems and a bunch of injury problems. But we'll see about Gronkowski. Brady and Belichick both said that they're coming back. So that's good news for the Patriots. But what's bad news for the Patriots is that they're going to lose both their offensive coordinator and their defensive coordinator. Josh McDaniels is going to the Colts to become their new head coach, and Matt Patricia is going to the Detroit Lions to become their new head coach. So they have to address their coaching staff, and they obviously have to uh, change up their defense and sign some guys in free agency and get make some good picks in the draft. And they are obviously next year getting Julian Edelman back from injury. You can make a case they're the favorites going into next year, not only to... Uh, win the AFC but to win the Super Bowl but I think Philly has to be considered the favorite to repeat with Wentz coming back and uh, everybody on defense coming back no key free agents although I think Alshon Jeffrey might be a free agent but they should franchise tag him if that's the case and all their, like as I mentioned all their key guys on defense are coming back but the Patriots on the other hand have to remake their defense and Malcolm Butler's obviously out the door. He didn't even play. He was benched for some reason. Maybe he missed a curfew. It wasn't really released why Malcolm Butler didn't play. And that's remained to be seen. So he's obviously not going to return to New England. And to, on tomorrow's podcast, yes, I'm doing a podcast tomorrow. We'll discuss the off, more off-season NFL chatter as well as my mock draft. College basketball had an interesting weekend and obviously overlooked because of the Super Bowl. A couple games I want to go over. On two games that I picked on Friday, I got both of them correct. Number 22, Rhode Island defeated VCU by a score of 81 to 68. Rhode Island improves to 19 and 3. VCU drops to 14 and 9. EC Matthews of Rhode Island put up 18 points and Justin Tillman of VCU put up 22 points. Six rebounds and four assists in defeat. And the other game I picked was Utah-Colorado. Colorado defeated Utah by a score of 67-55. Colorado improves to 13-10. Utah drops to 13-9. McKinley Wright, the fourth of Colorado, put up 21 points and four assists. And David Collette of Utah put up eight points in defeat. Utah is headed to the NIT and Colorado likely is as well. Saturday's games, a ton of interesting results. A ton of big upsets that nobody saw coming that 
have to be mentioned. There's one important one that I'm going to get to in a couple seconds, but on the page of where I have the games, I go in order. And the first game on my list is uh, NC State defeating Notre Dame by a score of 76-58. NC State improves to 16-7. Notre Dame, Notre Dame drops to 13-10. NC State has a case for an at-large. That was a big win for them. Matt Farrell of Notre Dame put up 16 points in defeat. And Torin Dorn of NC State put up 21 points in the victory. And I had NC State on the podcast. The big upset that I wanted to get to really badly because I'll admit, I said on this podcast that St. John's had no shot to win this game, let alone keep it close. I couldn't have been more wrong. St. John's did the unthinkable and upset Duke 81-77 at Madison Square Garden. St. John's improves to 11-13, snaps their 11-game losing streak in conference and although Duke's not a conference game, they're still winless in the Big East. But this has to be Chris Mullen's biggest win and best win as the head coach of the St. John's Red Storm. And Duke drops the 19-4. and And I couldn't have been more wrong on an outcome this year. Wow. Shamori Ponds of St. John's put up 33 points and 7 rebounds. Gary Trent Jr., who's improved on Duke this season, 22 points for him. And Duke has a big game this week against North Carolina in at the Dean Smith Center. I'll pick that game on Wednesday's podcast. And that's going to be very interesting, and I'll get to Carolina in a couple minutes. Number 8, Cincinnati defeated UConn by a score of 65-57. Cincinnati improves to 21-2. and UConn drops to 11-12. and Jacob Evans of Cincinnati put up 19 points and 3 assists. Jalen Adams of UConn put up 20 in defeat. And I had Cincinnati on the podcast. And I obviously had Duke on the podcast, as I mentioned several times. Like I said, I couldn't have been more wrong in a game. In a game I got correct, Houston defeated UCF by a score of 69-65. Houston improves to 17-5 and to improves its case as for an at-large, and UCF drops to 14-8. and Rob Gray of Houston put up 20 points and 5 assists, and B.J. Taylor of UCF put up 15 points and 4 assists in defeat. So that was a big win for Houston because that could have been a trap game. Butler, in a game that they absolutely had to have, defeated DePaul by a score of 80-57. to Butler improves to 17-7. DePaul drops to 9-13. Kalon Martin of Butler put up 26.6 rebounds and 6 assists. That's a great all-around game for him. And Maureen Marsich, Marich of DePaul put up 15 points in defeat. And I obviously had Butler on the podcast. Another big upset. Oklahoma State defeated Kansas by a score of 84-79. The number, 17, the number seventh team in the country dropped to 18-5 and five as Oklahoma State improves to 14-9. and nine. Big win for the Cowboys. They have an at-large case with that win. And if they can get a couple other big wins down the, down the road in the Big 12, that helped their case. They actually have the Oklahoma win. And... They have, I believe they have another big win in conference. Maybe Texas Tech? I think they did beat Texas Tech. That could be it. So that's already their third big win in the Big 12 this season. Kendall Smith led the way with 24 points and 5 assists. Aduka Azabuki of Kansas put up 20 points and 5 rebounds in defeat. And I obviously had Kansas on the podcast, so I got that wrong. Miami beat Virginia Tech by a score of 84-75. I had Virginia Tech on the podcast. I was wrong. Miami improves to 17-5. Virginia Tech drops to 16-7. Anthony Lawrence of Miami put up 25 points in a win. And Justin Robinson of Virginia Tech put up 22 in defeat. Big win for Miami. Virginia Tech, I think, can still get in the tournament. They just need to pick off somebody 
in the conference again, maybe steal a game in the uh, ACC tournament. They have the North Carolina win. Maybe if they get Duke get home, I'm not sure if they do or not. That's another opportunity for them down the road potentially. Clemson avoided the trap as the number 20 team of the country defeated Wake Forest by a score of 75-67. Clemson improves to 19-4. Wake drops to 9-14. I had Clemson on the podcast. Gabe DeVoe of Clemson put up 24 points. And Bryant Crawford of Wake put up 16 in defeat. Another game I got correct on this podcast, Texas A&M defeated South Carolina by a score of 83-60. to Texas A&M improves to 15 and 8. South Carolina drops to 13 and 10. Edmond Gilder of Texas A&M put up 15 points, and Justin Vinea of South Carolina put up 16 in defeat. Big win for Texas A&M. South Carolina probably not going to make the tournament. They've had a couple of shaky losses lately. Missouri got a big win, 69-60 over the 21. 21- Ranked Kentucky Wildcats. Missouri improves to 15 and 8. Kentucky drops to 17 and 6. As I mentioned, big win for Missouri to keep their at large hopes alive. They needed a win like this on their resume. Jordan Barnett of Mizzou put up 16 points, and Shea Galegas Alexander of Kentucky put up 15 in defeat. Big game for Kentucky on Tuesday night, as I'll pr- pick that game. In a couple minutes. Number 10, Texas Tech defeated TCU by a score of 83-71. I picked TCU on the podcast. I was wrong. I also had Missouri, so I had to give myself credit for that one. TCU drops to 16-7. Texas Tech improves to 19-4. TCU's probably staring at, I'd say, somewhere between an 8 and an 11 seed, possibly. Maybe Dayton which isn't that great for them, considering that they were off to a great start in the conference. Jarrett Culver of Texas Tech put up 20, and Vladimir Bordzioski of TCU put up 18 in the loss. Big win for Texas Tech on the road. And Texas Tech is probably looking right now at between a possibly a two seed. If they pick off West Virginia, they have to go to Morgantown. If they pick off West Virginia... In Morgantown, that might assure them a two seed. And I think they have Kansas again left on their schedule too. And I don't know if they have Oklahoma left. They might. But keep an eye on Texas Tech for a dark horse for a two seed. And if they like win out, which I doubt they'll do, kind of a lurking dark horse as a one seed potentially. Who would have thought Texas Tech would even be a two seed? Maybe even a three seed. Most people probably had them either an NIT team or like a bubble team at the start of the season. I don't remember where I had Texas Tech before the year. I think I had them as a bubble team. I'm not 100% sure about that. On to more results. A big win for the number 24 Michigan Wolverines as they defeat the Minnesota Gophers 76-73 in overtime. They almost... Lost that game. Michigan improves to 19 and 6. Minnesota drops to 14 and 11. Muhammad Ali Abdur Rahman of Michigan put up 17 points, and Isaiah Washington, in defeat for Minnesota, put up 26. And I had Michigan on the podcast. Providence beat Marquette 77-75. That was a big win for Providence. Very, very brutal loss for Marquette, as they might be staring at the NIT right now. Providence improves to 15 and 8. Marquette drops to 13 and 10. Marcus Howard in defeat put up 16 points, and Alpha Diallo of Providence put up 16 points in the win. Providence is probably looking at somewhere between like an 8, 9, 10. Marquette's either, I'd say, Dayton or NIT at this point. But like I, as I mentioned, I think it's NIT for them unless they pick off somebody major and go on a run in the Big East tournament. I don't see it for Marquette. I had hopes for them a couple weeks ago, but they've dropped a couple lately, so I'm not, I don't feel good about Marquette right now. LSU defeated Arkansas by a score of 94-86. LSU improves to 13-9, Arkansas drops to 15-8. I had 
LSU on the podcast. I was correct. I also had Marquette where I was wrong. Tremont Waiters of LSU put up 27, and Daryl Macon of Arkansas has put up 22 in the loss. LSU probably headed to the NIT. Arkansas is, I think, a bubble team at this point. Trap game possible for number two, Virginia. They avoid the trap, get a 59-44 win at Syracuse. They improve to 22-1. and Syracuse drops to 15-8. and DeAndre Hunter of Virginia put up six, 15 in a loss. Or I'm sorry, in the win. And Tyus Battle put up 15 in a loss for Syracuse. And Syracuse is probably looking at the NIT right now, too. They've dropped a couple games and blew a couple opportunities. So they're probably staring at the NIT right now. Number three, Purdue defeated Rutgers by a score of 78-76. They barely won that game. Rutgers did everything. They could, and they threw everything at Purdue. They did not give up in that game, and they made Purdue work. Purdue, that said, improves to 23-2. and two. Rutgers drops to 12-13. and 13. Corey Sanders of Rutgers put up 31 points, and Vincent Edwards of Purdue put up 18 points, 8 rebounds, and 7 assists. That was an excellent all-around game for Edwards. Florida State defeated Louisville by a score of 80 to 76. Big win for the Seminoles. They improved to 17 and 6. Louisville drops to 16 and 7. Phil Kofer of Florida State put up 16 points, and Day Yaddle of Louisville put up 17 in a loss. Louisville, I think, is beat somewhere between an 8 and an 11. Florida State, probably between a 5 and a 7 at this point. Alabama upset number 23 Florida by a score of 68-50. Alabama improves to 15 and 8, Florida drops to 15 and 8. And I had Al- I'm sorry, I had Florida on the podcast and I also had Louisville. So I got those two games wrong. Colin Sexton of Alabama put up 17 in the win. Kavon Allen of Florida put up 16 in a loss. Alabama has the resume to get in. They have this big win, and they have an Oklahoma win. So, and they have have more opportunities down the road. They have some shaky losses as well. And then Florida, on the other hand, oof. They're confusing. And they might, Florida might be looking at somewhere between an 8 and a 10. And Alabama's probably in that range as well. A team that absolutely had to have a game, and that's number 15, West Virginia. They defeated Kansas State in dominant fashion by a score of 89-51. Like I said, big-time win for the Mountaineers. They improved to 17-6. Kansas State drops to 16-7. Sagaba Kanante of West Virginia put up 19 points and 9 rebounds for the Mountaineers, and Dean Wade of Kansas put up 17 in a loss. Kansas State, I'd say still a tournament team. They're probably looking at somewhere between a 7 and a 10. West Virginia with the win. Um, still to me, it's between a, at best a 4, at worst a 6. They still have the bad losses on their resume. They have a big game tonight against Oklahoma, which I'm going to pick on this podcast. So I'll talk more about them in a couple of minutes. An unexpected result here, which was a trap game. Stanford defeated Oregon by a score of 96-61. I said that this was a possible trap game for the Ducks, and it indeed was. Stanford improves to 13-11. Oregon drops to 15-8. Dorian Pickens of Stanford put up 25 points. Troy Brown of Oregon put up 15 in a loss. Oregon might be looking at the NIT right now. That was a bad loss for them. And that was a game that they absolutely had to have. The Pac-12 isn't great this year. You have the two Arizona schools that are good. USC's probably headed for the tournament. Washington, I'll get to them in a couple minutes. They're pretty good. And then you also have UCLA that's had a couple big wins this year. They might sneak in as well. So you might only have five teams in the tournament unless I'm missing somebody. And that's not good for a 
Power 5 school or what we say in college basketball, a major 6 school. A game I didn't pick on the podcast, Penn State defeated Iowa by a score of 82-58. A game I did pick on the podcast, Mississippi State defeated Georgia by a score of 72-57. I had Mississippi State on the podcast. I obviously had Oregon. I was wrong there. Mississippi State improves to 17-6. and Georgia drops to 13-9. and Lamar Peters of Mississippi State put up 20 in the win. Yante Mayton of Georgia put up 13 in the loss. Georgia might not even make the NIT. Mississippi State's probably heading some between like a 10 and 11. They, they'll probably sneak in because the SEC is pretty good this year, unlike the Pac-12. Number 18, Tennessee defeated Ole Miss by a score of 94-61. I have Tennessee on the podcast. They improved to 17-5. and Ole Miss drops to 11-12. and Grant Williams of Tennessee put up 17 points, and Bruce Stevens of Ole Miss put up 16. UCLA defeated USC by a score of 82-79. I had UCLA on the podcast. They improved to 16-7. USC drops to 17-7. and seven. Aaron Holiday of the Bruins put up 23 points and 9 assists. Elijah Stewart of USC put up 20 in defeat. I think both of these teams are headed to the tournament, as I just mentioned. Probably both be in the 9-11 to 11 range. Number 6, Xavier barely got by Georgetown. 96-91 in overtime. They had to take a 4-point play for Xavier to force overtime. So, Georgetown almost pulled off a big upset that could have possibly cost Xavier a seed line, but no, Xavier escapes with the win. Trevon Blewett, who could very well be end up being the Big East player of the year this year, put up 31 points in the win, and Jesse Govan of Georgetown put up 23 in defeat. So yet again, a big win for Xavier. They've avoided disaster there, let's be honest, because... Losing at home to Georgetown would not be good for the Xavier program. Speaking of big wins, as I predicted on this podcast, I did have Xavier as well. Texas defeats Oklahoma by a score of 79-74. Texas improves to 15-8. and Oklahoma drops to 16-6. and Trey Young put up 19-14 and in the loss. Matt Coleman of Texas put up 22 in the win. Big win for Texas. I think they're headed for the tournament. They're going to be between a 9 and maybe an 11. They could be higher than that because they have some big wins on their resume. Oklahoma drops to 16-6. and six. Oklahoma's probably looking at somewhere between a 3 and a 5 at this point. They have a big game tonight that I'll discuss in a couple minutes. Um, a team that desperately had to have a win, similar to West Virginia, and that's number 19, North Carolina. They defeated Pitt by a score of 96-65. Carolina improves to 17-7. and Pitt drops to 8-16. and Luke May of North Carolina put up 26 points in the win, and Marcus Carr of Pitt put up 22 points and 5 assists in the loss. Carolina has a big game Thursday night against Duke at home. I'll pick that game on Wednesday's podcast, as I mentioned before. Cal defeated Oregon State by a score of 74-70. I did not pick that game on my podcast, but that's a result worth noting. Another result worth noting, Baylor defeated Iowa State by a score of 81-67. A game I did pick on this podcast, Boise State defeated UNLV 93-91 in overtime. Boise State improves to 19-4. UNLV drops to 16-7. Boise's in the hunt for an at-large. Chandler Hutchison of Boise put up 21 in the win, Brandon McCoy of UNLV put up 24 in the loss. I had Boise on the podcast. I had Nevada on the podcast. They defeated uh, Colorado State by a score of 76-67. They improved to 20-4. and Colorado State drops to 10-15. and Anthony Bonner of Colorado State put up 13 in the loss. And Caleb Martin put up 26 points in the win. Nevada and Boise are in the conversation for at-larges. And obviously the winner of the Mountain West tournament gets in. 
and both of those are schools are in play for at large as barring any bad losses in the conference down the stretch or even in their conference tournament potentially. Number five, Michigan State defeated Indiana by a score of sixty three to sixty. That was a trap game for them. They avoided the trap. I picked Michigan State on the podcast. They improved to twenty two and three. Indiana drops to twelve and twelve. Matt McQuaid of Michigan State put up 12 points in the win. Juwan Morgan of Indiana put up 23 points in defeat. And another notable result, number 11, Auburn, continuing the win, defeats Vanderbilt by a score of 93-81. They improved to 21-2. Vanderbilt drops to 8-15. Auburn has to be the quietest 21-2 in the country. Either them or Cincinnati. Has to be the quietest two-loss team in the country. Nobody really talks about Cincinnati very much because um, they're in the American Athletic Conference. Wichita State's in that conference, too. And Wichita State was supposed to be the better team this year. And they're not. Cincinnati is. And Auburn's quietly discussed because they're in the same conference as the likes of Kentucky and Florida. And obviously, Coach Cal's the coach of Kentucky, so Kentucky's going to get a lot of buzz. And there's other surprise teams in that conference, such as Kentucky. Or I'm sorry, uh, Tennessee. Alabama's good this year. So Auburn quietly 21 and two. Bruce Pearl has to be mentioned for, as a candidate for National Coach of the Year. Bryce Brown of Auburn put up 25 points in the win, and Jeff Roberson of Vanderbilt put up 30 points and 10 rebounds in defeat. Vanderbilt isn't that terrible. They almost won at Kentucky. They've lost a lot of close, interesting games this year. Number 13, St. Mary's defeated San Diego by a score of 65-62. to St. Mary's improves to 23-2. and That's another quiet two-loss team. And San Diego drops to 15-9. and Jock Landel of St. Mary's put up 34 points and 18 rebounds. He's probably on his way to the... West Coast Conference Player of the Year. Isaiah Pinero of San Diego put up 24 points in defeat. St. Mary's is another quiet two-loss team. They're in the same conference as Gonzaga. That's probably the reason why they're not as talked about as much. So three teams, as I just mentioned, Cincinnati, Auburn, and St. Mary's all deserve more recognition. The new rankings came out. Hopefully those teams are all higher than they were in the previous rankings. I'll go over the new rankings in a couple minutes. Number 14, Gonzaga defeated BYU by a score of 68-60. to Gonzaga improves to 21-4. and BYU drops to 18-7. and Kind of a revenge game for Gonzaga because BYU was the lone team that defeated Gonzaga in the regular season last year. Rui Hakimura of Gonzaga put up 15 in the win. TJ Hawes of BYU put up 22 in the loss. And I had St. Mary's and Gonzaga winning. A team I did not have winning was the Washington Huskies. They defeated number 9, Arizona, 78-75. Great win for Washington. Dominic Green with the buzzer beater at the end of the game. And gives Washington a big-time win to put them potentially on the right side of the bubble. I think they are on the right side of the bubble. They deserve to be on the right side of the bubble. They're 17-6. and six. They have wins over Arizona and Kansas. They have some bad losses on the resume, but with two wins over two top 10 teams, that's pretty darn good. And Arizona drops to 19-5. and five. Not a terrible loss for Arizona. That might be a good loss when it's all said and done. Noah Dickerson of Washington put up 25 points and 7 rebounds. And Dusan Ristic of Arizona put up 21 in defeat. Sunday's results. I got all my picks correct for Sunday. Went 5-0. and for In terms of Saturday's games, 24-9. and Like I said, I had Arizona beating Washington. I was wrong there. So 24-9 and for Saturday. 5-0 and for Sunday. And... Not many games for Sunday to go over. Boston College defeated Georgia Tech 80-72 to in overtime. Boston College improves to 14-9. Georgia Tech drops to 11-12. Jerome Robinson of BC put up 19 points and 5 assists in the win. 
Ben Lambers of Georgia Tech put up 14 and 12 in the loss. Number 17, Ohio State defeated Illinois by a score of 75-67. Ohio State improves to 20 and 5. Illinois drops to 12 and 12. Mark Alstrock of Illinois put up 19 in the loss. Keanu Bates Diop of Ohio State, 35 points, 13 rebounds in the win. Number one, Villanova defeated Seton Hall by a score of 92-76. Give Seton Hall credit. They hung around a lot in this game. Villanova improves to 22-1. Seton Hall drops to 17-6. Omari Spellon of Villanova. Spellman put up 26 points. Desi Rodriguez of Seton Hall put up 20 in defeat. Two more games to go over. Maryland defeated Wisconsin by a score of 68-63. Maryland improves to 16-9. Wisconsin drops to 10-15. Maryland absolutely had to have this game. They need to get all the wins they can get to keep themselves alive in this bubble conversation. Anthony Cohen in the win put up 23 points for the Maryland Terps. And Ethan Hatt put up 18-9-3 and and in the loss. Wisconsin's having a terrible season. I am very fascinated to see if Greg Ward survives this because he did really well those first two years, but let's be honest, those were uh, Bo Ryan's players, not his players. And so it's very fascinating to see what's going to happen there. Number 25, Arizona State got a big win defeating Washington State by a score of 88-78, a game that they absolutely had to have. They improved to 17-6. Washington State drops to 9-13. Shannon Evans put up 23 points and 5 assists for Arizona State. And Malachi Flynn of Wazoo put up 22 points and 4 assists in the loss. The new rankings are here. I want to go over them really quick. Villanova's won. Purdue... Is I'm sorry, Villanova's, yeah, Villanova's one, Virginia's two, Purdue three, Michigan State four, Xavier five, Cincinnati six, Texas Tech seven, Auburn eight, Duke nine, Kansas ten, St. Mary's eleven, Gonzaga twelve, Arizona thirteen, Ohio State fourteen, Tennessee fifteen, Clemson sixteen, Oklahoma seventeen, Rhode Island eighteen, West Virginia nineteen, Michigan twenty, Carolina twenty one, Wichita State twenty two, Nevada twenty three, Kentucky twenty four, Miami twenty five. Butler came close to being ranked as well. And I'm going to pick the games for tomorrow and Tuesday. Only two important games tomorrow, or games I consider important too. Um, We have a bubble team against a team that can use a big win at home. That's Louisville hosting Syracuse, give me Louisville at home. And a big-time game. Number 19, West Virginia at number 17, Oklahoma. Give me Oklahoma at home. I think uh, Trey Young has a big game. They figure out Press Virginia. And, if, by the way, if West Virginia gets this win, that would be a big-time win for them to improve their resume. Oklahoma, that would be a difficult loss for them considering that West Virginia beat them earlier in the year, about a month ago, in Morgantown. And if Syracuse is able to pick off Louisville, that improves their that they're at large chances and it hurts Louisville's chances of getting in the tournament. Couple games for you Tuesday. Number five, Xavier at Butler. Give me Butler at home. That's a big game for Butler, and Butler usually rises to the occasion at home against teams like Xavier and Villanova. Number twenty, Michigan at Northwestern, give me Michigan on the road. Number fifteen, Tennessee at number twenty four, Kentucky, give me Kentucky at home. South Carolina at Arkansas, give me Arkansas. Alabama at Mississippi State, give me Mississippi State. Number six, Cincinnati hosts UCF, give me Cincinnati at home. A big one in the ACC, Boston College at Notre Dame, give me Notre Dame. Well, it's not really big. I don't think either of these teams make the tournament, but both of these teams can use wins at this point. Baylor at Oklahoma State, give me Oklahoma State. Georgetown at Providence, give me Providence. Providence absolutely has to have that game. Number four, Michigan State at Iowa. Another trap game for the Spartans. I think the Spartans get it done. Iowa might keep it close. Don't rule out a close game there. Trap game for the Cornhuskers of Nebraska. They go to Minnesota. Give me Nebraska on the road. 
Missouri at Ole Miss. Give me Missouri. That's a trap game for the Tigers. After that big win, that could be like a letdown for them. Possibility. Number 22, Wichita State at Memphis. Give me Wichita State. That's a trap game for the Shockers. TCU at number 10, Kansas. Give me Kansas to bounce back at home. And last but not least, Boise State at New Mexico. Give me Boise State to improve to 20-4 and four on the season. NBA, real quick, a couple big games from the weekend. The 76ers defeated the Heat by a score of 103-97. The Heat made it interesting late, gave the Sixers credit, 25-24 and 24 on the season. Miami drops to 29-23. and 23. Ben Simmons put up 20 points and 5 assists for the Sixers. Kelly Olenek put up 19 in the loss for Miami. Big win for the Sixers. Warriors bounced back from their defeat at Utah with the win, 119-104 against the Kings. Give the Kings credit. They hung around in that game. 41-11 are the Warriors. And Sacramento dropped to 16-35. Kevin Durant put up 33 points and 6 assists in the win. Zach Randolph put up 18 points and 7 rebounds in the loss. In the most notable result of the weekend... The Houston Rockets absolutely destroyed the Cleveland Cavaliers by a score of 120 to 88. Houston improves to 38 and 13. Cleveland drops to 30 and 21. Chris Paul put up 22 points and 11 assists, and J.R. Smith actually led the Cavs in scoring. He had 12 points, and LeBron James had 11 points, nine rebounds, and nine assists. He came close to a triple double in in this blowout loss. And now the Cavs, um. A lot of questions about Ty Lue's future. Do they trade the Nets pick? Isaiah Thomas could be on the trade block yet again. I think anybody can be had on that roster except, obviously, LeBron. We shall see. And I'm very fascinated to see what happens with the Cavs at the deadline. I'm going to have a trade deadline uh, preview on Wednesday after picking all the games. And then, obviously, Thursday after the trade deadline, I'm going to do a podcast recapping the deadline. And speaking of bad losses, Oklahoma City Thunder had a bad loss on national TV, losing 104-108 against the Lakers. Lakers improved to 21-31. and OKC drops to 30-24. and Brooke Lopez led the Lakers in scoring. He had 20 points. He also put up five assists. Russell Westbrook was great for Oklahoma City, put up. 36 points and 9 assists in defeat. And I'm Oklahoma City's lost 4 straight after being 30 and 20. So they're an interesting team to watch at the trade deadline. Do they hold on to Paul George? Do they trade Paul George possibly for the Brooklyn pick? And that's going to be something to watch. And in two games, I'm going to pick for the TNT doubleheader tomorrow night. You have... Philadelphia hosting Washington. Give me the Sixers at home to improve the 26 and 25. And a big one, as I mentioned, Oklahoma City is at Golden State. I'm going to say the Warriors deal the Thunder their third straight or fifth straight loss. They'll drop the 30 and 25 as the Warriors improve the 42 and 12 after their defeat the other night to Denver. And. A big injury in the NBA, Aaron Gordon is out for four weeks. And he's out of the dunk contest. And Donovan Mitchell's replacing him. And that's a, a interesting trade candidate because he's an expiring. And as well as his teammate, Alfred Payton. Orlando is a team to watch at the deadline. We'll see if this injury affects what Orlando does with him at the trade deadline or not. But they could get a godfather offer that they certainly can't pass up. Please subscribe to this podcast. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm doing a podcast every day this week. Tomorrow's going to be an NFL off-season preview. And I'm going to do a mock draft on the podcast. I'm actually going to go 1 through 32. Wednesday's going to recap college basketball for tonight and tomorrow. Same for the NBA. And I'll pick NBA games for Wednesday and Thursday nights. And same for college basketball. And I'll preview the NBA trade deadline. Thursday, I'm going to come on and 
review the NBA trade deadline. And then Friday, we're going to preview the weekend in college basketball and in the NBA. That's it for today. You know, I went 45 minutes today. That's a while for me. And I hope you guys have